So if we look at it from a clinician perspective, um, to kind of go a little bit into the weeds, but not too far, um, we would really look at these points of integration that we have. So as you guys know, we're kind of sensory bound creatures. Um, without the senses of our world, there's not much for us to go on. You know, we think about like a sensory deprivation chamber drives people nuts over time, or it like cools them down if they're overdone, right? But um, so we kind of rely on those senses, but we don't, we don't really, um, we don't really use them independently. We use them together. So like if you're taking a big old bite of pizza or having a nice glass of wine, it tastes brilliant, but part of the reason it tastes brilliant is because you can smell it, right? When we lose our sense of smell, our taste becomes muted. And we can kind of think of the same thing when we think about, you know, our ability to feel with our, our skin and know where our joints are in space and then to be able to orient our head through different reference points, um, you know, to be able to understand where the joints in our neck are and how that compares with where we view a horizontal, like when you look out into the horizon, where's the flatness of the earth and where's vertical. And then we also compare that to the interpretation that we get in our vestibular system, whether that's through kind of the angular acceleration in the labyrinth or our graviceptive pull back to the earth that we get from gravity. Um, so when we think about all of those sensory things, they all integrate, which is beautiful. So they're not really independent. And the way I, I, I talk to a lot of people about it is to think about when you move your hand or when you go to reach for something, um, it's not really a hand movement. It's a shoulder and an elbow and a hand and fingers, and it all works as one. And when we think about the way we move, we're really just moving to carry this noggin of ours around and everything is built to be able to kind of set this at, at calibration. So our proprioceptive system and our visual system and our vestibular system that you guys talk about brilliantly are all wired together. Um, so when we look at a case like that and understanding that we have errors that can occur in the actual integration. So we may have an inner ear that you go get a caloric done or you do you know, a barony chair and everything's beautiful. That inner ear is fine but they don't feel fine or they don't operate fine. And then we start to see like their eyes do all sorts of crazy stuff and their neck is killing them and they tilt their head funny and all these things. And you realize that it's not an error in the senses, it's in how it's being interpreted in that integration center. And that's super useful because we can dial in to very specific places, whether it's in the brainstem or in the cortex or in the cerebellum to understand where that error is. And then we can use that sensory system to kind of spin it back and say, we're going to use the sensory system to rehab that part of the brain rather than saying, you know, kind of just operating where sometimes we do where we, we do the algorithm of PT or we do the algorithm of vision therapy and say, we hope this is going to work because you got eye stuff. or We hope this is going to work because you got ear stuff. But rather thinking about it, like, let's dive in there. So if we think about that from an integration perspective, and then we apply that to the autonomic system. The job of the autonomic system is just to deliver fuel and keep us at homeostasis, to keep everything balanced, to take it off our conscious plate so we don't have to think about it. And that really makes makes us rely on that system operating effectively with our senses. Um, so where that happens in the midline of the brainstem shares a lot of corollaries with what we see with integration from the inner ear, um, with integration from uh, our proprioceptive system, even from our visual system, but even our, our kind of our default and um, our default mode where we think about, you know, that that uh, that processing area in our brain, how, how that back a little bit. But um, yeah, so anywhere that needs oxygen has to be connected to the autonomic system. Um, so anywhere that can be injured within the brain is connected to the autonomic system. So we're going to be able to see little changes in how our blood pressure works and in how our vascular system works and how are we sweat or the dilation of our pupils and all these little clues give us um, give us the ability to see not only where things are happening in the brain, which is super, super cool, um, but it also tells us what the capacity is. So you know this, but you'll see people that may have a very similar looking injury where one person can just like do whatever you give them and they they do pretty well. And some people it's like, I can give them one thing and then they are laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. And we look at these capacities in this autonomic system, it gives us a really brilliant way to be able to gauge what someone's capacity level is and gives us like a real time marker to look at. So if I'm watching someone and we're doing, you know, just like a simple VR maneuver and all of a sudden I notice when they turn their head to the left, that pupil dilates. 
I know that we've exceeded that capacity. So I have to do something different. I can't just continue to do that thing or I'm just gonna blow that pathway out of the water. Um, so when we think about dysautonomia as like a clinical entity, like I feel terrible and my heart rate is real high, that's to a point where it's gotten so noticeable that like I can, I can feel it versus like just being able to pick up little nuances in the clinic. Um, and I think that being able to use those is super, super helpful. Yeah, I think a lot of clinicians are surprised when they have a lot of their vestibular patients have, um, all, it looks like blood pressure issues, or all of a sudden they get that racing heart during mm -hmm. some of their exercises, um, or that the vestibular system itself is is affecting um, their blood pressure, their heart rate, and how they're feeling. You know, when they kind of get started treating patients, patients, they go, well, I'm not sure if this should be happening or is that really connected? But there's a lot of input that ties everything together. And that's where individualized care is so important when it comes to working with this patient population, because what one person can do is going to be completely different from another person.